Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be joining you today. Uh, my name is Christian Mondela. I'm one of the startup business development managers here at HubSpot for startups. And uh, I'm really excited to be presenting to you all today. I'm sorry I won't be able to do it in person, uh, but Yogi was kind enough to let me record this webinar beforehand for you all. Um, so we're Yogi and I have been working very closely uh, to help all of the startups at Fortune Accelerator really get the most out of um, inbound marketing and sales. So I wanted to present to you guys how that all works. Um, so today, this presentation is gonna be mainly focused on inbound marketing and sales for startups. So we're gonna go through how to attract visitors, convert leads, nurture prospects and close customers. So then I wanted to start off with this quote from CEO and founder, uh, Brian Halligan. I'll give you guys a little more background on him earlier, but I think this really uh, resonates with the startup world um, and hope provides you guys a little bit of inspiration. You can't outspend the giants, you cannot think, out teach, out help them. And that's really been our mantra at HubSpot you know, for the past 10 years. Um, and I hope that you guys maybe carry that quote forward with, uh, with how, where you take your companies. So today the agenda, we're gonna go through the HubSpot story, what is inbound, how HubSpot works, um, and then Q&A, um, obviously we won't be doing this live, but after the presentation, feel free to email me at cmondulo at hubspot.com or hsfs at hubspot.com. Yogi has my information if you guys have any follow-up questions. So to kick things off here, I just wanna go through the HubSpot story. So you're looking at our two co-founders. On the right is Brian Halligan, on the left is Dharmesh Shah. So they had a little bit of different backgrounds and I wanna provide a little bit of insight into those. Uh, excuse me, Brian actually started as a sales leader at a company called PTC, which is local here in Boston. Um, he started as an entry level sales job, worked his way up, became VP of sales and uh, eventually left the company after 10 years and helping it scale to a billion dollars. He was their top sales performer while he was there. We decided to take all of the lessons he learned in the big corporate world and apply them to startups. He actually joined a venture capital firm here in Boston, invested in a ton of different startups, and then went on to MIT Sloan School of Management, where he actually met Dharmesh. And Dharmesh had a very different background, actually. So he worked um, as an angel investor here in Boston. He's actually one of the most famous angel investors we have. And I'll show you guys his website that he still keeps active on today. So this is his blog on startups.com. And what's really cool about on startups is uh, obviously Jarmesh keeps continues to keep up the blog and it's a, it's a blog about entrepreneurship, startups, inbound marketing and sales, kind of the trends he sees in the industry and how startups can uh, take advantage of them. What's really cool is, you know, back when he and Brian met actually, you know, Darmesh was generating hundreds of thousands of leads to this website. Um, hundreds of and generating thousands of leads per day and on zero budget, which is really cool when you think about it. This was totally different than the way Brian was thinking about going about inbound marketing sales, pouring tons and tons of money uh, into, into his work and his startups, but actually generating marginal returns. So when Darmesh and Brian actually met at MIT Sloan, the business school here at MIT, um, they kind of put their heads together and thought that you know, maybe there is something to this inbound marketing and sales and the fact that content really is king in bringing people in and attracting an audience to your idea. And that's really where HubSpot came from. That and a couple other um, observations about the market. So I'll go into those right now. Um, this might be prevalent for a lot of you and you know, how you've structured your organization or your different tool sets up to this point. You might have a website, an analytics tool, reporting, a blog, a security system, a CRM, a sales tool, working your way up the ladder to different website pages, content. Um, your SEO probably isn't that great because as you can see, none of these tools actually really talk to each other. They're different tool sets stacked together, maybe connected through some sort of integration that you have. Uh, but unfortunately, as you can probably tell, this is very hard to scale and from both a people perspective you know, and a technology perspective. So this is what HubSpot attempts to solve with our software. So we have a CRM, a sales and a marketing tool. The CRM we like to think of instead of your website serving as the foundation of your business, we want the CRM to house your deals, your companies, your contacts, keep track of your entire sales pipeline, leverage a sales tool on top of that that integrates directly with your CRM so that you can actually accelerate the sales deals in your pipeline and generate some quick wins for customer acquisition. And then finally, marketing. When you're really ready to press the growth button, 
have the idea, know exactly who the right people are to attract, how you can convert them on your website, and actually generate more customers. So all of these connect through our growth stack. That's what we call it over here at HubSpot. So we have actually built a CRM, a sales and a marketing tool to help all companies across the world. But our HubSpot for Startups team is solely focused on you, the startups. That's really why Brian and Darmesh built this company and this program to begin with is thinking back, you know, what if they had HubSpot? What if they had this awesome tool to help them grow? Where would they be today? Probably a couple, three, four years ahead than they already are. So our HubSpot for Startups program actually gives all startups within our approved accelerator network, which is actually what Yogi did for you guys, to give you guys 90% off our software. So before we actually dive into what the software is, I want to get a little bit of an overview of what inbound marketing and sales are. And I want to start by framing it with the methodology. So we'll go through the first methodology, inbound sales, right now. You're looking at it on my screen. There's a buyer journey on the bottom here, awareness, consideration, decision, which is what we consider to be mapping out how any person, usually in a B2B or B2B sale, B2C sale, actually makes a decision. So first, as an awareness, you have a problem. So you want to you want go out into Google, type in, you know, how do I um, help my sales team um, generate more leads faster? I shop around different, a bunch of different places, actually have a conversation with a few folks in the consideration stage. And then finally, after an informed debate, I make a decision. Now, but 80% of the work before anyone talks to you is done, sorry, excuse me, is done before anyone even talks to you. This is mostly done in the awareness stage. So salespeople do not have the power anymore. It's really all in the buyer's court. They have all the information they need to make a decision. So as a company, you need to make your information as available as you possibly can. And from a sales perspective, driving the sales process forward on top of it, you're going to have strangers that you're going to want to identify. There's going to be tons of people out there. How do we figure out who the ones are that we want to talk to? There's, those are the people that come in as leads. People might be interested or aware they have a problem. They want to connect with them. We want to vet out who are the leads versus the qualified leads. Who are the folks that we actually want to spend our time with? Because as you guys are founders, you have a very limited amount of time to begin with. On top of that, your salespeople you bring on will have hundreds of people to sift through. How do we make sure we're talking to the right ones? Then when you've identified those qualified leads, an exploratory conversation is set up to talk about, you know, what's the potential opportunity there? And how can we have an informed decision? around is your software or product or service the best solution for that person. And finally, we want to advise them to make a decision. Ideally, that results in a customer. So inbound sales at the end is really the marriage of adv advising, a buyer-centric process, and personalized information to that specific individual to help make, them make a great decision. Inbound marketing layers on top of the inbound sales methodology in a similar fashion. So we want to attract strangers once we have more visitors, convert them into leads. Once we have leads in our database, we want to close them as customers. And then we want to delight those customers and make them promoters of our business. A really interesting fact actually about HubSpot, as you can see, this gap is actually close. The reason being is 58% of our customers come from referrals, from promoters of our business. They're, so they're the ones actually doing a majority of the work to bring more and more strangers to our website. So ideally, we're going to have a blog and a keyword tool centered around making sure that all of our content is attracting the right strangers. Once we have a majority of people, we have more eyeballs on our site, we have all of these visitors, we can actually convert them through forms and landing pages and different buttons that prompt them with the right offer at the right time to create more leads. Then when we have these leads, we actually want to close them as customers, building our targeted workflows, leveraging our CRM, using email to give people the right information at the right time, to hopefully close them as customers and then delight them afterwards by understanding their interaction with our product or service. So monitoring social to see how well they enjoyed our product, giving them surveys or follow-up information or smart content to cross sell or upsell them at the right opportunity. But again, we want to close this loop and ideally inbound marketing is the marriage between content, place and time all coming together to help generate more leads for your sales team. So before we actually go into the software, I know that was a lot of information up front and actually we're going to go into quite, a more, quite more detail here. Um, two things I would definitely recommend all of you go out and do on your own time. We have two inbound certifications here at our awesome HubSpot Academy. That's just academy.hubspot.com. 
There are a ton of certifications you can take, ton of trainings and webinars you can, you can log in and do. But these two certifications for inbound marketing and inbound sales are classes that you can do on your own. You can send to, send to your team members to do as well. And you actually get a certification in each of these disciplines. It's a really great thing to you know, have on your resume. And especially as you go out and hire new people, those pivotal first growth marketer, that first salesperson, how can we identify that this is the right person that I want on my team to make sure that we succeed? So let's actually now dive into the software. So what we're actually looking at right now is HubSpot's HubSpot. So I know we talked about the CRM sales and marketing tool. What we're gonna go through first today is the CRM. I wanna show you guys a couple different things. This is a totally free CRM that you guys have can leverage today to help you organize your deals, your companies, and your contacts. These are the three main objects that we work within within our own sales tool um, and help us organize our sales pipeline moving forward. As you can see, this is HubSpot's HubSpot. And we've actually got a forecast in here as we've got deal, uh, deal dollar amounts linked up to specific deals that are moving through our pipeline for this given month. We have an activity dashboard tracking all how well our sales team is performing. We can see our deals close versus goal. We can see our sales performance, how many contacts have we created, our lifecycle pipeline, et cetera. And we can see, even see a deal revenue dashboard to make sure that we're uh, the right people are doing well. And then we can make sure that if there's some laggards behind, we can check it out. This is totally customizable to you, uh, but it's a really cool pipeline to visualize how your sales are actually stacking up. And now I actually want to jump into HubSpot for startups own dashboard. We made our own CRM. We're actually our own little startup within HubSpot. So there are about 1700 employees at HubSpot worldwide right now. The HubSpot for startups team, we manage 600 partners like Forge Accelerator and about 15 to 2000 startups, 1500 to 2000 startups um, in our given pipeline. And we do it all out of our own dashboard. So four people manage a $2 million business. And our partner, our partner pipeline is essential in making sure that we're interacting with our partners in the right way and making qualified and good connections with them and following them up with them at the right time. So to give you guys an example, actually, this is our partner pipeline that we customize within HubSpot CRM. You guys can customize the deal stages any way you'd like. For us, to give you an example, Yogi actually applied for HubSpot for Startups partnership. We set up an exploratory conversation with him to discuss how well the partnership would work out and how we could work best together. We onboarded them as a partner and we approved them. And now we're actually going to educate you guys. So we actually looked up Forge Accelerator here. We can see that Forge is still in the onboarding phase. We want to actually move them to education. Because we're doing this webinar with you. And now I can see all of my deals and where they should be in our respective pipelines. This is a really great way for myself and my partner to keep track of what's going on. And I can actually customize the view, see just only my deals. So if we just went into Christian's partner pipeline. I can see I have nine folks in applied, 14 in explore, 17 in onboard, and 49 in educate. So I should go make sure that I have something on the books with all 49 of these uh, partners. And in the applied stage especially, have we booked time yet to actually move them along from Explore to Onboard? What's cool is if I want to edit the deal stages, this is something that you know, my partner Greg and I do all the time. So we have a bunch of different pipelines in here, but for partners here, we used to have about eight stages. That was way too many. Um, it was tough to keep track. You know, things were slipping through the cracks, and a lot of them were, were redundant. So we narrowed all the deal stages down to four. But you know, who knows? We might actually decide that there's a stage in between Explore and Onboard that we might want to add. So if we want to just add the deal stage, we can pull it in here and customize this view however we'd like. But what's cool is we've actually added a couple more pipelines. So for startups, you know, as you guys maybe are just focusing on one product or service right now, that could change overnight. Or you could have a great idea or see you know, a new opportunity in a new market. In order to make sure that everything's aggregated and you, know, you can separate out different pipelines uh, you know, by what that specific product or service is, 
you can actually create more pipelines. So we have an education pipeline for specific webinars that we're going to create. We actually have a self-purchase pipeline for different partners that are interested in executing on our scholarship. So we created all of these pipelines within HubSpot for startups, um, our own CRM. And again, this is totally free. All we're trying to do is aggregate all of our information into one place. So we don't have to sift around Excel, or, um, excuse me, Microsoft Excel or Google Docs or anything like that. We can filter out anything, any information we need to know, build out any view we need in order to make the most effective time management uh, system that we possibly can. So if I bring up Forge again, click into it. I'll show you guys a little bit of view of what we see when you open up a deal within our CRM. So on the right here, you're actually looking at a live feed of every interaction that we've had with Forge up to this point. So mainly that's been Yogi. Yogi's been emailing us back and forth. All the emails have been pulled for our Gmail account, dropped into, uh, dropped into this timeline. You can see the email chain goes on here. You can see when he was accepted in HubSpot for startups. You can see how many times he's opened the email, how many clicks he's made on it. When he last reached out to us in February, the meeting that I actually had with Yogi and Greg and I had together, all of the notes we took when we first met back in January. But what's really cool about this is, you know, ideally, as you onboard new people, you don't have to go in and give them uh, the rundown of every single deal or thing you're working on. They can just come into the CRM, look at all the information, and it's logged right here. And it's something I'll, I'll show you is really cool. Actually interfaces with our sales tool so that you can record calls and actually send out targeted templates to save your new people time. On the left pane, we're looking at all the different properties that we care about for Forge. So whose name it is in? What, so what's the next step date? I should update this that actually, we're talking today, our next step date is startup webinar. So I can do that all right from, all right from our CRM without leaving the page. I can view all the properties. I can customize it however I'd like. There are about a thousand customizable properties within HubSpot. You can go in and uh, put whatever you'd like in there. I can even see the company name is in Greg's name. I should change that to my name because I'm the one doing this webinar and I'm owning the relationship. And I can see all of the number of cohorts they have per year, the number of startups graduated, all the information that Yogi actually submitted on a HubSpot form that's in the marketing tool has been pulled into the CRM and placed in here. I can even see the contacts I have associated with this particular account. I can actually head in and click on Yogi's name. So again, this will mirror the information that I have, but what's really cool is if I go into HubSpot and if Yogi's ever popped around on HubSpot before, you can see anything he's looked at. So this is actually introducing our marketing tool. I think it's really cool to just show you guys um, right now. But let's see if he's actually looked at in HubSpot's portal. So we can see the form Yogi's filled out by ad, page views, analytic events, calls to action, marketing emails. Let's see what he looked at. He's viewed the page, best startup CRM sales and marketing tool. So he's looked at HubSpot for startups. He's looked at the page, native advertising, understanding the basics, media meets e-commerce. So I have a complete uh, overview of you know, what Yogi has been doing on our website. So this again has been from, this is from the marketing tool, actually all the lead information pulling into the CRM and connecting marketing and sales together. So, so far what I've gone over is the free CRM and introduce a little bit of how the marketing information that you can collect through HubSpot actually pulls into the CRM to connect your contacts to your companies, to your deals, to your marketing efforts. Next, I want to show you guys are a couple of cool things in the sales tool. So normally this, this costs $50 a month for each individual with HubSpot for startups and the 90% discount you get, it actually only costs $5. So you can see that you actually get templates, email templates that you can build out sequences, series of emails that you can send to a given individual over time, documents, a prospecting tool, which is really cool. It's a reverse IP lookup that helps you track different individuals, uh, different companies that are coming to your site, a meetings app that you can actually embed on your website to help save you time, and a messaging app and a call queue. 
So if we look at email and templates first, I'm on Yogi's uh, contact record within the CRM. I can see templates here. I have built out follow-up emails that I use on a regular basis with all my partners that save me a ton of time. So I talk with 100 partners a week, right? And I have a lot of information that I want to follow up with them. I can't just send them a customized email every time. That would be very laborious, and I wouldn't be able to keep up with all the information I need. So what I can actually do is after our quick exploratory call, I made this email that has all the information that Yogi would need, the next steps outlined, and it customizes to what I want. So if I want to say, make sure that it's Christian instead of Greg, I can do that. Edit the email before I send it out. Mess with any of the styling, add a link, add an attachment, and actually send the email. This is synced up with your Gmail and will pull right into your CRM. What's also really cool, and I'll show you guys this as well, is you can build out these templates very easily and we'll actually keep track of how they're performing. So within our templates dashboard and HubSpot, I can see all of the emails that we've sent together. So Greg and I uh, manage the partners within HubSpot for startups. I can see that I've sent 464 emails. He sent 322. I have a better open rate and a better click rate than Greg. So he actually might want to ask me what, what kind of emails I'm setting and why they're, so much, why they're performing so much better. But if we look at the different templates that I created, so if we go to that exploratory call follow-up, I can see that editing it, I can add a personalization token, a company token, a meeting link, all of the information I need, make sure that the email is good to go, and then get ready to send it out. So this saves you a ton of time of going back and forth and creating the same email over and over and over again. But if we go back to Yogi's contact record, I'll also show you another really cool thing that we have. So we have actually a VOIP system, a voice over IP system that links up uh, through your current provider to actually call out of HubSpot. So I can call Yogi right from my browser, record the call, take any notes while we're typing, and then punch the information into our CRM. So without ever leaving the CRM, I can actually run a sales call, set up a marketing demo, do all of this under one portal, take all the notes I need, and then Greg can come in any time and see how my progress has been advancing with Forge. So this is a really, really cool feature that helps save us a ton of time, and as a startup, can save you a ton of time without having to go back and forth between the phone and computer. And there's two other things that I want to show you in our prospects and meeting tools. So that's overall our sales tool again before we hop into marketing. So first is a prospecting tool. Now I know many of you might, this might be the first time you guys are thinking about generating leads. You might have a couple of referrals in your name or folks that you've met. Now, actually this tool allows you to see all of the URLs and the domains that are stopping by and actually visiting your website. So for example, for us, I, uh, I work with accelerators. So I can see that all the domains, there's an accelerator right here, 500 startups. I can preview, okay, tell me a little bit, but 500 startups. I know they're one of the biggest in the world, but I can see that um, there was a big description, uh, any related companies. I can actually source out companies based off of uh, this specific individual. See all the anonymous visitors, how many pages they viewed, the number of visitors, when they last came to HubSpot. But I can actually filter this down by any of the properties that I have. So if I want to go down by city or country or industry, um, let's just say, you know, I'm looking at architecture and planning. Just curious about it. Yeah, so I got two in here. I can see two architectural firms have actually come by HubSpot for startups, which is pretty interesting because we don't really help architectural firms. But all the information is available to you in the $5 sales tool. Again, what I've gone through so far, um, we've only gone through the free CRM and the $5 sales tool. But the next, and I think the coolest part of the, the sales tool is our meetings app. So this is an embeddable link that you can create on your website to be able to schedule out all of your meetings in advance, so you never have to go back and forth exchanging, uh, exchanging times. I know that is absolutely the worst and probably the biggest time suck in any salesperson's day, any executive's day. So instead of having someone do it for you, 
we can actually embed this meeting app right in the bottom right hand corner of your website or wherever you'd like sync it up with your calendar and based on your availability we'll actually give you the time slots you're available so for me when is it when am i available over the next two weeks let's just say thursday the 30th i can see that all these times are still open for me i click on 2 30 first name last name and email address so all of this information is available right here and this will actually send a notification to myself book the time on the calendar that i need and i'll be good to go so so far all we've gone through in the and the hubspot portal are the crm and the five dollar sales tool so per person you guys can actually have access to this for five bucks a month And now what I want to go into next is marketing. So I know I introduced that at a high level, talking about all the lead information that we're pulling in. So this is really where we start to connect with marketing and sales. So the marketing tool, quite simply, to give you guys a little bit of an explanation. So the marketing tool acts uh, with a JavaScript script tracking code that you can put on your website. I'd say about 70% of HubSpot customers do it this way. We do have the option to host. So if any of you are thinking about starting your, starting your website from scratch or you don't have a WordPress website yet um, or any sort of your typical provider, you're absolutely more than welcome to use HubSpot's hosting tool. I'm not gonna go through how that works today, but feel free to follow up with me after. Today I'm gonna go over a couple things. I'll give you the broad overview of what marketing does because I think there's quite a bit here. But again, like I referenced before, there are plenty of resources at your disposal. We are, our academy team is world class. When you onboard as a customer uh, to HubSpot, our startup success team will be there for you with office hours um, and, and additional fault to make sure that you guys are successful. But we're not just gonna leave you hanging with the software. We really wanna make sure that as intuitive as this is, that you have the tools you need to be successful. So when we look at marketing on our growth package from a high level, there's contacts where your marketing workflows, your forms are gonna be, your content, where you're gonna build things like blogs and emails and landing pages uh, and calls to actions. Your social tool can actually replace a tool like, let's say a Hootsuite. You can actually link up all of your social channels and pull them into HubSpot. And reporting, it's gonna report on all of your analytics. And finally, productivity, to help you manage your content calendar, your different campaigns, and all the internal projects that you and your team might have to be working on. I want to go through uh, two examples of the marketing tool today that I think are most relevant to startups because get kicked off the ground as quickly as humanly possible. And for me, I think that's email and workflows. So if we actually hop into HubSpot for our startups here, I'm going to show you guys how to build an email within HubSpot. So we actually have an onboarding workflow that HubSpot for Startups uses to have all of our new partners on board with the information they need. So Greg and I obviously reach out and talk to everyone, but afterwards, we send them a series of follow-up emails uh, that we've actually built within HubSpot. So you wanna create a new email, it's quite simple. We have a bunch of templates that are built out for you already. But if I wanted to show you one that's a little more finished, let's hop in right now and see how it works. So we'll have all of our emails, we'll actually have the, uh, the analytics on every single one so that you know how well these emails are performing. So, so far, you can see that we sent out our first partner onboarding email. We actually just launched this new one about two weeks ago to 53 people. It's been delivered to all 53, which is great. We can see who's opened it. Looks like there's an 84.9% open rate, which is pretty great. We think it should be 53 though. Honestly, if you're onboarding as a partner, everyone should open this email. And I think this is the coolest one, is the click-through rate. So I can see how many people have actually clicked on the email, who's clicked through in the past 24 hours, let's just say first month. I can break this down and see clicks over time. And I can see who's clicked where. So we actually have a click map for each email to say, all right, well I know that we've put about five, excuse me, five or six links in this email. We can see who's clicked on the group demo. Who's clicked on partner resources? Who's clicked on how to apply? Who's clicked on share the blurb? View process. 
So learn how your sharps can apply. A 30% of people actually click that immediately when opening this email. That's great. We can see by device type, looks like most of people are viewing our, our emails on the browser, uh, excuse me, on a desktop. And by browser, it looks like most people are using Google Chrome. But actually, I can go in here and see, you know, there are about 40% click rate on how do your startups apply to HubSpot. Looks like people are asking for help on the process for actually doing that. So that might be something that I can articulate a little bit better on my call up front. But what's cool as a founder is, you know, you don't have time to collect all this information um, uh, on your own. You know, HubSpot's going to do all this for you in the background. And we actually open the email to see how we'd edit it. Creating emails in HubSpot is very simple. The idea here is you don't have to have a technical background in order to create emails. If you want to go and mess with the code, you're more than welcome. But ideally, you can actually go in and like a WYSIWYG editor, come in, add the different uh, personalization that you'd like, the styling, the editing, the images, the header, the footer. I can send a test email out to any contact I choose. Receive the emails as specific content. Send a plain text email. I can actually test an email client too. So any email client I want to make sure that it works on, I can test beforehand. And in addition, I can optimize this email. So I can see actually, you know, we've sent this out to a bunch of people. You know, what are some things that we can improve? Looks like our email subject line is a little too long. There is zero call to actions in your email, which is a little incorrect. Deliverability, you're not using our email sending domain, so we're actually not using HubSpot, we're using our own. So that might be uh, something to, to, to think about. Smart content, we've actually uh, not really designated this to change based on the type of behavior someone's demonstrating. We have a subject line, we have a nice content body, we have a good image, and our deliverability is pretty good when we think about uh, it's, that it's authenticated with SPF. So we're gonna make sure that we check all these boxes before we actually send this email out, which is a pretty great check to make sure that you're not missing anything glaring and that your email is getting the best chance of actually being opened. This is hugely important, right? You don't wanna give someone a ton of email, you wanna give someone the right email. And finally, although a lot of people have been visiting, uh, viewing this, uh, about 91% on desktop, we do wanna make sure that it's mobile optimized for that 9% who's looking at it. So I can see that on an iPhone, this is exactly how the email would display. So that's a quick overview of the email tool. And now with the few remaining minutes we have left, I wanna go in and show you guys how you tie this all together with workflows to get some quick wins. So obviously you guys are under a lot of pressure to make the most of your time. So doing that means automating a lot of internal and external processes and follow-ups that normally would eat into your time during the day. So that's what we try to attempt to solve with workflows. You can actually build a, a series of workflows a series of actions that set off based off a of specific criteria. So that could be a property-based workflow, something backing into a fixed state like a webinar or a product release, or a standard workflow that's uh, made by joining a specific list that you've created. But if we go into our partner application approved list, we can see that that first email that we created, oh, I'm sorry, this is the archive one, the one we, we There we go. We can see that based on the specific criteria that we set, application status equals approve, or we're re-enrolling contacts or enrolling uh, existing contacts. We'll actually set the application status equal to approve. Then we'll uh, we'll copy that property into a series of other emails, and then actually deliver our first email. So we can see that all of our contacts that have been enrolled, we have so far 907, 239, 126, all of this is happening in the background. And workflows are really, really easy to make. So the onboarding side is we send out this email, then we send out a PR email, and then we delay the action five days, and we send them another one. 
delay the next action five days, another one, and another one. The idea here is to send them all the information. We don't, Greg and I don't have to do a thing. All we have to do is look at the data, see how well this email is performing. And this actually, all, all these emails have been set to give the partner specific follow-ups and actions to do. So from a founder's perspective, if you're following up with a lead or trying to convert more customers um, or trying to re-engage or set a meeting, you can actually create emails beforehand, set up a specific criteria that if someone fits the criteria X, Y, Z, you can have a workflow set up to give the information to that person that's most relevant. So this all works in the background to help you save time. And that's really, I think, the most actionable piece up front that a startup can use on the marketing side to help them grow. Now to wrap up here, I just want to kind of review what we went over. So we went through a lot today. And again, I can't stress enough how important the academy team is to helping you guys be successful. But again, HubSpot for Startups, which you all have access to, is a 90% scholarship on all of this. Today we went through the CRM, the sales tool, and the marketing tool together in the growth package. So if you are interested and you want to apply today, simply come to HubSpot for Startups, hubspot.com slash startups, click apply, and you'll be able to simply fill out the form and get started. But from a high level, I hope you learned a little bit more about inbound marketing and sales and how to leverage that for startups. Yogi, thank you so much for setting this up. Again, it was great to speak with you all. And if you have any questions, please email hsfs at hubspot.com or myself directly at c-m-o-n-g-i-l-l-o at hubspot.com. Yogi has my information. But thank you all and looking forward to hopefully speaking with a lot of you soon.